everybody. Mike Beer here with your DRF race of the day for Sunday, September 17th. We're up at Woodbine for the race of the day. Race number nine, the grade three Seaway Stakes. It's for fillies and mares, three-year-olds and up, seven furlongs on the tapita surface up there. The purse, $150,000. Here is your field of nine for the race of the day. Remember to scan or clip that QR code that you see on your screen right now for free race of the day access on your mobile device. Really a uh, good race here. It feels like a sort of a well-matched field. No real standout favorite, as you can see there. Morning line favorite anyway is drawn to the far outside post. Number nine, Il Malacchio. Source, you know, certainly has the credentials to be really tough in here. A multiple graded stakes winner. So far in her career, her best form has been going longer. They're going to cut her back to seven furlongs for this right off of a, a grade three win going a mile and a 16th in her most recent start. Um, we'll see if it makes any difference. She seems like the kind of horse who should be okay sprinting, um, especially if she has a little bit of a, a pace setting up in front of her that she can run into. She's a quality horse, uh, obviously a major, major player in here. We'll see if she gets the right trip and can be effective sprinting. Second choice on the morning line down towards the inside, the number two Millie Girl. She's three to one. The four Hazelbrook, four to one on the morning line. So it's, it handicaps sort of wide open. The, the morning line maker sort of listed all the horses that way. No real standout favor. Let's take a look at the time form U.S. pace projector real quick we'll see um, how the race they expect the race to set up here you can see a bunch of horses they sort of have grouped towards the front end um, in this race and I, I guess the race kind of handicaps that way I mean I do think that uh, I didn't think there was necessarily any one horse that you had to just point to and say well that horse is definitely going to be on the lead in here I sort of felt like the number three Van Tarzi um, could be a horse that would, would be on a send here um, she's second off the layoff she's switching back um, for, to synthetic after a turf start off the layoff sprinting. Um, and so far, anyway, the best races that she's run in her career have been when they got aggressive with her and put her on the lead. She's won twice, both of those wins in wire, to, wire fashion, including a 92 buyer speed figure victory last October. So I just sort of felt like she would get aggressive. The number six ticker, ticker, ticker tape home is a three-year-old filly. She's stick fake. Uh, taking on some older horses in this race, but she also has speed. She's cutting back out of the Woodbine Oaks where she was involved in a really solid pace. Um, her win in the Fury Stakes, two starts back um, in June here, going this distance, a wire-to-wire -wire victory. That pace was not that fast though. So she could go the number eight, Hey Bobby. That horse could also show some speed in her two most recent starts. They've gotten aggressive with her. So we'll see how it all plays out. I kind of thought it would be the three going to the front in here, but uh, you know, we'll see what happens. We'll see what uh, what decisions these riders make um, as these horses break from the gate. Let's start with the handicap and with the horse down on the rail, ready to venture, who is second off the layoff here for trainer Mike Stidham. Um, and listen, this is a horse who you know, her most recent couple of starts, not that great. Um, everything that she did prior to that, though, I would have to say gives her a real chance in this race. She started her career over in England. She was a turf horse over there when they first got her um, here to North America early last year. They sort of concentrated on turf uh, with her, you know, moved her around to some different tracks. They tried a bunch of different distances with her um, while mostly keeping her to the grass. And she was fine on that surface, obviously. But she won her synthetic debut last May here at Woodbine going six and a half. Really impressive. Just a dominant win that day. She didn't run on the all-weather surface again until October at Presque Isle. She won that race around two turns, stretched out in distance. Then they went to Turfway Park with her in December, cut her back to six. She won that race pretty impressively as well. First three starts on the all-weather surface. All victories, all really nice performances. Three different distances, or two, three different distances, two sprints and one route. Um, so it feels like she's really adaptable. She's really handy in her races. She can get any kind of a trip, and she handles any kind of you know surface uh, at least to this point. And you know after that, listen, it's the end of a long campaign in December or in January rather at Turfway Park where they ran her in the wishing well, and she really didn't show up that day. Stidham gave her time off. She was off the layoff in her most recent start at Presque Isle Downs. Not a terrible performance. She was a little bit flat in the stretch, but she was also not that sharp. Um, she was racing on, and she just got really tired in the very late stages there. I think it was a race that she really needed. And I think we've already, we already know just from looking at her, her past performances that when she's in top form and ready to show up with a top effort, she can beat a field like this one. She's a great price on the morning line, breaking from there. I think she's a really interesting horse in here. The number two is Millie Girl. Um, Catherine Day Phillips trains this one. She's relatively lightly raced still. Um, she's won three times. One of those victories um, did come on this all-weather surface. That was going seven furlongs um, the same distance here in May off of the layoff earlier this year. And we'll take a look at the replay of that race right now. She runs really, really well in here, as a matter of fact. She didn't break that sharply. Left from the rail there, didn't break that sharply. But she just moved up into position sort of on her own there. Tracked in hand um, around the uh, up the backstretch and around the turn 
turn as that field sort of raced in a tight pack and they switched her three wide at the top of the stretch there, as you can see. Really game finish, takes over late. She's clear under the wire. It's a good performance. She's much the best in there with an 87 buyer. She comes back and runs uh, in a couple of graded stakes races on the turf and did not disgrace herself, finished third in both of those starts. Is she better on turf than she is on synthetic? Maybe, but I don't think that's clear from the races that she's run so far. I don't really mind her switching back to the synthetic surface for this race. It's just a really short layoff for her. Um, so I'm not gonna concern myself with that, um, especially since she won off the layoff back in May anyway. I mean, she makes a lot of sense in this race. I don't know that I'd be dying to take three to one on her against this field, but um, she's pretty good. She could easily win here. The number three is Vantarzi. We talked about her in the open because it kind of feels like, at least in my opinion, it feels like they're probably going to get aggressive with her and try to make the lead. And along those lines, let's take a look at uh, the replay of her most recent win. This is the last time she was on this all-weather surface here at Woodbine. It's a six and a half furlong race. It's last October um, back in the Kevin Attard barn. And she just went right to the top in this race. She never really faced a serious challenge in this race. But listen, it's not like she was walking on the lead. This is first time Lasix for her. And she just kicks clear from this from this field to this stretch. Never gave them a chance to catch her in there. A dominant performance in a really fast buyer speed figure of 92. It's the career top for her. And it sort of stands out above anything else that she's she's ever done. The other six races don't really come close to that. Um, her next start out of that win in November, she didn't make the lead. She settled for third as the favorite. It wasn't a great performance. Um, and then they started her off this year off the long layoff on the grass, a race that I just don't think you're supposed to hold against her. Back to the all weather surface, has good speed. I thought they'd get aggressive within here. Um, didn't love her, but she's a great price if she can run back to that, uh, that win the last time she um, you know, the last time she won a race here last October. Hazelbrook is the 4-4-1 four, four on the morning line. Um, I just thought this horse made a ton of sense. Had a great campaign last year as a four-year-old. Four for six with two seconds. Um, she was second in this race. She won two stakes races surrounding it. A good second in the Bess Arabian at the end of the year. Just showed up with one good performance after another last year. Um, the figures make her a rock solid contender in here and she's third off the layoff now. I didn't think that she ran uh, particularly well in her first start back this year, uh, back in uh, back in July um, in the Hendry Stakes, a grade three. Just didn't break right in that race, sat on the inside, just wasn't sharp in there, never really got involved um, and just sort of finished evenly. I thought she took a step forward though in her most recent start. That was going seven furlongs in an allowance race. She sat a better trip, got forward. Um, the pace was pretty solid and she was keeping after it. It's not like that was a slow pace and just got out finished. I took over in the stretch and just got out finished late by a couple of horses rallying up to her inside. I thought all in all, it was a good performance. It was a step in the right direction. I think it's pretty clear from looking at her on paper that if she gets back to the form that she was in last year, she's supposed to be really tough in here. The five is perfect, uh, 10 to one on the morning line, another for Mike Stidham in this race. This one has a little bit more to prove, obviously, than her stable mate does. She's um, one for four on the all-weather surface in her career. The other, uh, the only, the other uh, wins for her um, have been on the main track on dirt. So, um, but I think she handles this this surface just fine. Her figures suggest that she's maybe even better on this surface. They've run her in some stakes races, mostly going longer. Um, Stidham hasn't sprinted her since the first two starts of her career last summer. He's kept her to longer and two turn, um, mostly two turn races. Um, so we'll see if the, if cutting back helps her. Something's going to need to push her over the top against this field. I don't think those stakes tries um, on the all weather surface uh, earlier this year. I don't think they're terrible performances. I do think she's going to have to run better than that to beat a field like this one. This pace could get competitive though, and I think a competitive pay, pace helps this 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 filly maybe as much as it helps anybody else. The so number six is ticker tape home for trainer Mark Cassie, another one who started out on the grass, uh, but her three starts on the all weather surface. They're all good performances. Second in the display as a two-year-old um, uh, early, I think towards the end of last year, they came back with a, a dirt and a turf race down at Tampa over the winter. And those races didn't go that well, but they were back up here um, going seven furlongs on the all-weather surface in June. Here's a replay of the Fury Stakes. And she just, you know, dominates this field. Um, had speed right from the start, just assumed command. Everybody else took a hold. Uh, Patrick Husbands just went to the front with her. They let her have the early lead, and she just traveled really strongly throughout the race. Never really faced a challenge, was just swinging into the stretch on a clear lead, you could see in that replay, and just ne was never threatened to stretch. Much the best in there with an 85 buyer. Cassie stretched her out to nine furlongs, ran her in the Woodbite Oaks last time. She finished fifth. 
um, as the favorite in that race. I don't think it was a poor performance. She had a, uh, an outside post in there. They tried to go forward with her. That pace was very strong, and she was involved for a long way. Got tired at the end. I don't think it was a poor performance. I like her cutting back in distance for this. You know, it's another one. I kind of feel like she has to maybe take a little bit of a step forward in this kind of a race, assuming everybody shows up with their, you know, representative race. But I don't see that why she couldn't do that. A three-year-old, again, taking on some older fillies and mares. The four is talk to you later for trainer Ian Black. She's got a race two starts back um, the last time she was on the surface. And that effort, uh, an effort like that one, will give her some kind of a chance in here, especially if the pace is fast. That was just the kind of performance, though, right? I wasn't sure that she did a ton of running there. She earned an 88 by, by her speed figure. It's a career best by several lengths for her. She just sort of sat it out and then made a run at the end to get up for third at a huge price in that race. She ran fine. Um, I guess if she shows up with another race like that and, and, and the pace sets up in front of her in this race, I guess she could be affected. I just don't love any of her other races and didn't really want to better off of any of those. She's uh, switching back from turf here. I guess it's to her credit, though. Out of that Hendry two back where she ran well, she came right back on turf last time and ran well again um, at another good price to finish a pretty close second in there. So maybe she's just in the best form of her life right now. The number eight is uh, High Bobby. Um, this is one of the harder horses, I think, to make a case for in here. She's 20 to 1 on the morning line. She did win her most recent start on turf where they just sent her to the front. She took some pressure. She shrugged it off, um, and she got the job done in there with the 79 by her two back. They also got aggressive with her on this uh, all-weather surface and an, an allowance optional claimer race against some weaker horses. She was a big price that day, but again, they used her speed. She got to the front, and she got run down late before being disqualified from second in there. Um, I just I just feel like she's in really, really tough against horses like this. I respect the fact that her last two races are solid, and it, and it sort of suggests that she's in good form right now. I just think she's probably in way too tough here. And the number nine is your morning line favorite, Il Malacchio. Just a good horse. She's been a good horse, you know, right from the start. She handles all three surfaces. She's never won on dirt, but she's run fine on that surface. She handles turf. She handles uh, the all-weather. I guess the question is, um, is she as good sprinting as she is going longer? And that's, you know, obviously the real question for her. She was a stakes winner on turf around two turns as a, as a two-year-old. Um, she was a stakes winner uh, routing as a three-year-old on the all-weather surface. She was a grade three winner last year going a mile and a quarter. So she obviously, you know, handles distance and she's, you know, maybe the best horse the best horse in this race overall, all things being equal, but all things are never equal in horse racing. And she's gonna have to prove that she can sprint in here um, against a good field of horses. Her last start was just another, you know, really good performance. It was a two turn race, another grade three. The pace really wasn't that fast. So she just sort of kept it in range, um, you know, stayed within the uh, within range of the leaders around that final turn and just stayed really gamely through the stretch to finally close it down right at the end. She was really determined. She got the job done. Another 90 buyer speed figure for her, which is a figure that she's run several times in the past and is her career best. I don't know, man. She makes a lot of sense in here. In some ways, she's the horse to beat. It's all about whether she can be as effective sprinting as she is routing because she hasn't sprinted in a really long time. Not against her, um, but I did feel like maybe we could try to beat her and we'll move to the uh, picks here for the race of the day. Remember to um, click that subscribe button for all for access to all the DRF content um, on the YouTube channel. Um, I'm going to play against the favorites in this race. I felt like it was pretty wide open. I felt like you could make cases for a lot of different horses. And the horse that I want to bet is the one ready to venture down on the rail. 12 to 1 on the morning line. Um, I don't even think I would need to get that kind of a price on her. I could take less. But it just feels like she's going to be a fair price in here. And to me, her good race gives her a real chance in here. She's second off the layoff now. Um, I think she really needed that return at Presque Isle. I think this is the right spot for her. Good trip could be coming from the rail. This is a great distance uh, for this for this mare back on the all-weather service. I'm going to take Ready to Venture in here, 12 to 1 on the morning line. Went 1, 4, 9, and 5 in your Sunday race of the day. It's the grade 3 Seaway race number 9 at Woodbine, the approximate post time, 539 Eastern.